morning. I'm doing thought for the day uh, today. Uh, first one I've done, um, but it's a privilege to do it. I suppose when I was reflecting on what I might say this morning, it suddenly struck me that it's only a month really to, to Easter, the time when we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so today I want us just very briefly to focus on those well-known words that we find of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 20 and tw to 22. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also comes the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. This morning, if I was to ask you what is the most certain thing in your life, I wonder what you would say. For many of us, we've learned over the last, well, almost 12 months now, that even work and holidays are not guaranteed. Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of America, once famously said that there are only two certainties in life, taxes and death. Now, I know I'm sticking my neck out a bit in advance of the Chancellor's uh, budget statement next week, but I'm not quite so certain about the inevitability of taxes because some people could avoid them or even evade them. But death itself is one of the great levellers. It will happen to all of us. How many people worldwide have been unexpectedly taken over the past year through COVID-19 alone? In our passage today, we read of one who died, Jesus Christ. He voluntarily offered himself up. Jesus once said, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up. He is one of the only exceptions to this unchanging rule of the certainty of death. And our passage today speaks of that. From it, we are reminded that Christ physically died, but on the third day rose again from the dead and is now alive forevermore. He became the first fruits, we are told in these verses. Well, what does this mean? Well, quite literally, the first one to have done it, first one to have risen from the dead. But equally, it's that glorious assurance of the harvest to come. Each one of us as human beings is under the sentence of death. You will surely die. I will surely die. That's what God said to Adam in the garden because of his sin. The inevitable result of his disobedience of God's command was physical and spiritual death. The writer of the Hebrews reminds us that it is appointed unto all men to die. The emphasis there is on all, each and every one of us. However, we also read in John 3, verse 16 and 17, two of the most well-known verses in the whole of Scriptures. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. As we approach Easter, do you know the true reality of those events in your life? That Christ died on the cross of Calvary for your sins, for my sins, that we might receive freely forgiveness of sins, but also eternal life. By simple trust in him, by asking him for forgiveness of our sins, we too might not die spiritually, but that we might receive eternal life. Christ's death was not sufficient of itself. He needed to rise again from the dead. 
that great hymn, Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Saviour, waiting that coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with Christ, with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose. Hallelujah, Christ arose. Do you know in your life the experience of the risen Christ? Then you can do so today, simply by turning to him in prayer.